Years ago, I was in Elsa's garage with the flat files, and Elsa started opening one drawer after another, taking out photographs and telling me stories about them. And I thought, oh my god, this is a movie. But it took me a while to get around to actually making that movie. And I'm really glad that I did. Here's, here's, here's a question for those who don't know you and uh, who, who, of course, know, uh, they know your photography. Right. They know Earl Morris' uh, mo uh, films, his documentaries. And Earl, let me ask you this question. How do you basically draw, if you will, a, a line from 1988's Thin Blue Line, which had its own center of gravity, to any number of documentaries that you've made, to where we are now with the B-side. Draw a line for us from uh, 88 to 2016, 17, with the B-side, your latest uh, documentary. I don't know if there is a line, or if there is one, it's a zigzag of some sort. Um, I can tell you why I like this film. Please. Even in addition to liking Elsa, which is certainly part of it, uh, there are moments in every film, um, if you're lucky, you feel like you've captured something, something that you really didn't plan to capture, didn't expect to capture. And in this film, it's Elsa looking at her own photographs. I find there's something really, really powerful about it. Um, Elsa looking at the photographs of herself and her parents. Elsa looking at the photographs of Allen Ginsberg. Um, there's something extraordinarily powerful and poetic about it. And I can't tell you why it is of interest or why it works, but it is of interest and it does work. And that makes me happy. And beautifully personal. I love the, uh, the interaction with the past and the present, the uh, references to people we're all familiar with, or many of us are at least, uh, besides Ginsburg, many other, uh, Jonathan Richmond, others uh, who you've taken photographs of, your path has crossed uh, in Cambridge and elsewhere. I love what the Boston Globe had said, you're local, but you're not parochial. <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> and uh, can you talk about just the, your interaction with these uh, extraordinary people of the past who inform our present? People like Allen Ginsberg and, um, and the emotion that was conveyed in that scene when you talked about listening to news of his impending death and looking at the photograph of his life. Cambridge is that kind of place where you can run into people. So I would say, I don't know the answer myself. So. Um, Isn't it enough that you just saw it? Hmm. Yeah, I love it. Hmm. But I mean, how to explain how it happened to me is like, um, a fantasy, like how did I, how did I get that job at Grove Press? I, I, I mean, life is so accidental that no wonder people get hit by cars. That's the other <laughs> side of getting hit by a car. <laughs> so, so, so how did I get the job at Grove Press? I said that I typed sixty words a minute. I could barely type. <laughs> You, I, you lied to them? <laughs> I spoofed the and public. And they never threw it, and I quickly learned. But, and that's in the days when there wasn't even an electric typewriter. And, but um, how did I get the 
so at the job at Grove Press, it was a tiny place, I knew someone, I had just come from my junior year in Paris and I hung out at a bar and there at Grove was a guy who hung out at that bar. Mm -hmm. and, oh, you have babies, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, and then Alan walked into the office and my life changed. So how did I meet Harvey? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I think when you do something like what I do, you think, how did all of this happen? And, and there's real, I, unless you believe in the divine hand to guiding you through them, <laughs> you don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm as mystified as you are. I really don't. <laughs> Because there are people who have bad luck and people who have good luck, and I have 50-50. <laughs> also, Elsa, save stuff. Oh, you don't know from saving. <laughs> that is not saving. No. Do you know that Ginsburg, you know, because I've told you this before, Alan Ginsburg, it's really true, he checked every wastebasket. Even, even in someone else's house, <laughs> he would go through the wastebasket and see if he had accidentally left a note paper. He kept, I'm, I'm really not exaggerating, every single scrap of paper. Once, and once Bob Dylan left a note for me on the front of the house, and Alan kept it. Because <laughs> he figured it really was for him. <laughs> Still, we were very fortunate. Um, uh, two of the people who worked on this film with me, Molly Rokosh and Steve, Steve Hathaway. Okay. Um, Elsa was fabulously generous with her archive and some of these old photographs and movies. Uh, I'd never seen any of this material and... Um, well, and neither had I, you know, and since the day. I never, never even knew I had the one of me roller skating. Mind you, that's the only day I was ever on roller skates, for sure. 